Hey, what's up, you guys? This is uh, Phil Wash with uh, Inspired by the Gift Mentoring. Uh, today I have uh, Billy Carter. You know what? We got to get loose. Just relax. Uh, we're starting something brand new here with uh, Inspired by the Gift Mentoring. I um, want to go personal with Mr. Billy Carter, the Etiwanda alumni. He's now at uh, Arizona Christian University. Um, so I'm glad to have you with me. I'm glad that I reached out to you and, uh, share some of your story, um, uh, what things that, you know, you overcome to transition to where you are now. Okay. You just started out in a football family, you know, born into it. So all throughout, I want to say to high school, I was exceptional at it. High school, freshman year sort of hit me on how short I was. I came into high school, I want to say about five foot, 98 pounds of wet clothes with rocks in my pocket. <laughs> so, so I knew I was going to have to do a little bit of grinding. And then we had Rob, too, as a DB coach. And then he just showed me his process to the league, how hard it was. So I just believed that anything was possible always. Because I had started out a Christian home, too. So I had strong faith that nothing comes without hard work. So throughout high school, I've been grinding my whole high school life. And for some reason, I just couldn't get on the field on varsity. I, didn't, I had one year of varsity. That was senior year. So it was times when my faith was just tested. I was getting kind of depressed. I was like, man, am I going to make it to the next level? But I just kept grinding. I, I never quit on myself. That's one thing I told myself. Never quit on yourself. Nice, and so nice. I decided to stop crying to quit, but to start crying to keep going. But see, and, and when you're dealing with those obstacles that you're facing, you have those key words. Right. And those key words are just registering in your mind and you, you try to pick yourself back up. Um, give me, tell me from the from your heart mm -hmm. how family has helped you in that way. Family was everything. To be honest, I wouldn't be where I am without him. Dad was always just that guy, mentor on the football field. And he showed me nonstop love being my coach at one point, and then he just never stopped telling me how proud he was of me, no matter what I was doing. A bad game, a bad practice, he loved me, and he told me he was proud. Mom's was my ATM, she was my Uber, she was my security. <laughs> Mom's was everything. She stopped. She never stopped loving me either. On the football field, she was my biggest fan. She would root for me no matter what the circumstance was. So those are my two biggest people in my life as far as where I am right now. Nice, my family nice, is just nice, the main part nice. of my life. Well... I mean, for what I've seen, how you've grown over the last year and a half, two years, I have to really, you know, give kudos or respect, you know, to the, you know, the God upstairs for one, and just your perseverance. Because I've seen you in the weight room, I've seen you uh, maneuver, I've seen you being down on yourself, but the one thing you really showed that you were trying to inspire others through what you were dealing with at home, um, the, you know, not having the height that you wanted. And your dad is tall, but your dad is about what? Six? Six, three, I want to say. <laughs> Lord knows why I got my mom's height, but. <laughs> <laughs> but that shows your conscious effort, mindset, mental. Yours, that was all mental. Because you, can, you could have easily been distracted which you were sometimes, Easily. but through those distractions, you kept going. Right. Because you wasn't going to allow anyone to tell you what you could not do. Right. So, doing this and being a part of your life in some area, it just shows that if you are strong mentally, you can accomplish anything. Yep. And that mental toughness showed on your senior year, it showed in some of your highlights, on, you know, for college. You know, you won your first ring. You know, I mean, and now you're you're away from home growing up. I mean, how was that? It was just, it's amazing just to see how far I've come, but it also put in perspective how far I have to go. Just being able to be a self-motivator now and relying on all of my, honestly, all of my faith on God because, Sometimes I realize, I realize when I got to college, sometimes I don't have all the answers. Wow. And if you don't have all, the, if you have all the answers, what is there to believe in? Yeah. So yeah. it's that those moments where I just turn to believe in. 
Last question. I'm gonna ask you this last question. What I think we talked about this on the field a couple of times, just personal. Uh, what is your gift that inspires you to help others? It's just love for others and just the ability to reflect on myself, see through the things I went through, and to be able to go to those people and make sure they don't go through those things with negativity like I did that sometimes in my life. Just helped out with the FCA camp this week. Some of those kids have a rough life. I don't know why some things, sometimes things are so hard, but they're, they're becoming men in the process. And so I want to be that person in their life that they can vent to. I'm still texting them right now. Right. And they had come in as individuals just focused on being those cool guys. I'm here for football, but I told them, guys, your identity is not in the sport you play. Neither is by your shortcomings in life. Yes. And nice. then they had been tough for a long time until Wednesday. There was an altar call. Wow. Well, and one of my guys, he had, he had given his life to Christ. Uh -huh. and another one had rededicated it. And it was tough. I gave him a hug. And then I turned around just to see my guys. Normally during the altar call, they'd be sitting down doing chapel of songs. But they were standing up arm in arm together worshiping. And I couldn't really express, I couldn't understand what was happening, how changed men like that could be so quickly mm. just to shift their hearts and turn towards God. Let's go. And then on the <laughs> last day, we had all gotten a group hug and they had cried their hearts out. They didn't want to leave me and I don't want to leave them. It was so wrong, but we got to make disciples of the earth. And they're texting me just right now. I love you, Billy. I can't stop crying thinking about you. Wow. On Instagram, someone had commented, George, I believe, on my picture, he said, Coach, you're the reason I want to get closer to God. So wow. it's just a blessing to be used on that platform. Wow. And wow. One, of, one of the leaders of the group, Aaron, had been the hardest one, the toughest one, probably has a hard background. And to see him die a public death to be reborn is just a blessing to be used as a tool in that process. So my love for others is really what keeps me going. That is the gift that God has given you. And you see it at a young age because you tapped into that place and you wanted to find out who Billy really was and who Billy really is and his purpose and in God's plan for your life. Man, I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being with me. Love you like a son. And uh, I hope to see good things from you this year. Um, whatever inspires you, people, uh, let it come from your heart. Whatever inspires you to be great, let it come from your, your gift that God has given you. And um, always tap in to that gift to be successful. Inspired by the gift, we out.